It only took Singapore about 50 years to become one of the world's most developed countries and economies. The country is known for its high standard of living, low unemployment and strong economy. These achievements have, however, brought with them high levels of stress for Singaporeans. In 2019, Singapore's suicide rate rose by 29%, which has been partly attributed to stress. 81 plus 70 plus 29 plus 14 plus 67 answer. At a table, a boy is concentrating intently. He holds a pen in one hand and counts on the fingers of the other as he quickly does mental arithmetic. 11-year-old Jovan solves maths problems with astonishing accuracy and speed. The speed of these children's mental calculation is extraordinary. This is, however, normal for the children and teachers here, because this is a mental arithmetic institute. 51 plus 69 minus 44 plus 58 minus 16. Answer. Mental arithmetic involves visualizing an abacus with the right hemisphere of the brain and using the left hemisphere to perform calculations based on the imaginary abacus, requiring intense concentration. Learning mental arithmetic begins with becoming familiar with the abacus and understanding its basic calculation principles. Once the abacus is familiar, one can progress to mental arithmetic where calculations are done by imagining and moving the abacus mentally in response to math problems. Our abacus is launched about 14 years ago. So uh, we realized that um, some children have difficulty in doing calculations. And then so what we see is that uh, the, we see that the traditional abacus is quite different from how the children are learning mathematics in school. Yeah, so th what we have done is that we, adopt the, we, adopt, uh, we have adopted the method that the children learn in school on, and uh, develop our abacus based on that. On a Saturday afternoon, the park and outdoor plaza of a mid-sized shopping mall in Singapore is packed with people. Some of the children run around or play with the equipment set up in the yard, while others follow their parents into the buildings. The little girl looks determined, carrying a small backpack. Once inside the building, we can see the name of the tutoring institute it contains. Children don't come here to relax or shop. Singaporean children start learning mental arithmetic from a very young age. This eloquent, confident Jovan, who wants to be a lawyer, has been studying mental arithmetic for eight years. We challenge Jovan to a math duel with full confidence as we have the help of a calculator. Okay. <gasps> Wait, already? Six, five, one, six. Uh <laughs> six five one six <laughs> a minute later fast math is just a progression from learning mental arithmetic training the two hemispheres of the brain to work effectively for learning to develop a systematic mind and for critical thinking is what jovan's father intends for his son from a confidence level on their so-called mental, in terms of uh, preparing them for the school, so-called uh, challenges, because uh, the max over here is actually quite high standard. So yeah, as a as a parents that we want them to be uh, so-called mentally prepared. But, yeah, it's a very competitive in in terms of education in Singapore. Singapore's excellent education curriculum is known to be extremely difficult. It's so difficult that even parents have to rely on tutoring schools to teach their children how to do their math homework. In Singapore, almost all subjects included in the curriculum are challenging. Although it is one of the best educated countries in the world, for most parents even this is not enough. Intense competition starting in childhood has become the reason for going to tutoring school. Competing with classmates and friends from other schools is, however, less stressful than competing with yourself for the best PSLE scores. PSLE is a national exam 
that defines the fate and future of Singaporean students. The competition starts even before they enter kindergarten. At the age of three years old, but when you really get into that, it's uh, probably is around five years old. Yeah, he started to, uh, so we can see the improvement on his uh, m uh, mental. Right. Yeah. Is that the regular age, like three years old, is that a regular age to start sending your kids to no. this kind of tutoring? No, in my opinion, no, actually. They can start as early as possible because kids, as a, in fact, before the three years old, we also bring him to other kind of like uh, um, education, so different languages like Spanish, so, so they, they'll be able to absorb. Yeah, so it, it, it can be start as like two years old, yeah, one year old. For Jovan, starting mental arithmetic at the age of three might be considered late by Singaporean standards. The average age to start taking extracurricular subjects in this country to prepare for school is only two. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. Singaporean stress starts to build early in life and increases with age. Care. The Singaporean Student Support and Counselling Agency acknowledges that Singaporean school children are highly stressed and the number is on the rise. We are seeing an increase in the stress level amongst the children and youth uh, in Singapore. Um, we work with children and youth in the, in the school system and um, largely we see an increase over the last two years. Uh, from 2017, you were here. Yes. Yeah, and um, the various reasons, yeah, why they are stressed out. It could be related to family issues. It could be related to the schools, the exam stress. Learning at each level is a ladder that children must continue to climb. Once they graduate, it doesn't mean they can stop either. They face a greater challenge, which is work. Who gets a better job? Who gets a better salary? Who has become a doctor, a lawyer, a banker? Who gets a job in a large organization? These are all standards that make everyone scramble and fight to achieve from a young age. Singaporeans drive to do well and work for prestigious companies is driven by the word kiasu. The word Kiyasu comes from the Hokkien language and means the fear of losing to others. It is a definition of values and practices that shape Singaporeans into thinking that they must be better than others. More than 90% of Singaporeans follow this route. Avoiding these long-established societal values is rare. Being the black sheep of a family and in society always comes with questions from both family members and others which can't be avoided. Sometimes it may not be a question, but a look of obvious disapproval works just as well. Hui Ren, a 25-year-old Singaporean woman, stopped pursuing this path. She grew up in an educated middle-class family and attended prestigious schools throughout her young life. All this time, she worked hard, both in the classroom and in cram school, to get good grades. She did everything to do with her studies wholeheartedly. It wasn't that she enjoyed it, but it was the pressure of Kiyasu. She was afraid that if she got bad grades, she wouldn't have a chance to enter a good university and would lose the opportunity to find a good job with a good company. Because like, if you don't do well, then like, you know, what if you don't get into this university or what if you don't like, get into this kind of school or so something like that. It was some kind of anxiety about the future that was like, okay, like you need to you know, go for tuition and like, just buck up, you know, that kind of thing. After graduating, Hui Ren didn't disappoint. 
she got a job at Singapore's number one real estate agency. Her family was proud of her position in a large organization. This was a stable life with high pay and career advancement opportunities. After two years, Hui Ren's career was going well. Her boss was pleased with her work and offered her a promotion. Hui Ren decided, however, to quit her job to plant trees because of the stress from work. It was stressful in itself because there's a lot that you're always that's always on your mind, but also it's it, it's stressful because there's a lot of small things that build up constantly. Um, I mean, the the hours were long; they were like unnecessarily long. Like, you know, you're always what time to what time? Like from like eight forty-five or nine to like usually I'll leave work like seven, eight. Like I used to when it was like very stressful I'll leave at like 9, 10, midnight like when, when we're at like peak times. Hui Ren surprised her university professor mother when she said she would leave her job. What's perhaps even more surprising is that her mother didn't stop her. Maybe it's because her mother has always been aware of how stressful her working life was. She was, she was a bit surprised but because she knew that I was very stressed and that I was like quite overworked um, and the working environment was quite a bad one because, um, like, yeah, I think um, my, my boss was a, at times quite challenging to, to work with. Um, so she knew that I, was, I had all that pressure. So, yeah, she was like, okay, yeah, take a break, quit, sure. Hui Ren is now a volunteer planting trees in Thailand. She said that what she's doing today is not a job accepted by Singaporeans. It's a job that doesn't make money, but gives her satisfaction, and most importantly, is stress-free. Living in a work-based society like Singapore, being asked what she does for a living is inevitable. People who listen to Hui Ren's answers react differently depending on their age. For an adult, they'll ask why she doesn't work for the company. And how will her future be stable working like this? For people of her age, they'll often say that she's so cool for having the courage to leave a big organization to do what she enjoys, and they often end up saying that they wish they could do the same. As far as Hui Ren knows, though, none of them have dared to break with this core value. They're still stuck in a Kiasu state of mind. The root of the stress Singaporeans suffer comes from being instilled with ambition. Being cut off from the Federation of Malaya 58 years ago has been a powerful force driving Singapore to seek self-sufficiency as quickly as possible. This small island does not, however, have any natural resources as the basis for the country's development, including fresh water for consumption. The only resource that exists and can be developed is human. And humans develop only when they are well educated. Singapore's first Prime Minister, Lee Kuan Yew, devoted up to 20% of the country's budget to education. He instructed the Singapore government to set up an education curriculum to keep up with ever-changing times. This small country, which was once the poorest in Asia, has developed both economically and educationally to become one of the most rapidly developing countries in the world. This growth, however, comes at the cost of higher stress than in other countries. According to a 2019 Cigna survey, over 92% of Singaporean working age people feel stressed. This is higher than the global average of 84%. Singaporeans make about 11 million doctor appointments to treat stress-related illnesses a year. This is astonishingly high in a population of only 5 million. The way of releasing stress varies from person to person, but one of the recent more popular ways for Singaporeans to do so is to destroy things. The Fragment Room, Singapore's first and only Rage Room service. Uh, we felt like it was an outlet that Singaporeans needed. Um, 
Yeah. And I can't take full credit for it. I can't take credit for it at all, actually, because it was my uh, it was my very good friend that that, that, that brought it in. Um, and he was right. He was absolutely right. Um, it was very 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 well received. And I, um, yeah. So uh, the the entire concept is that uh, if you're stressed out, whatever, um, we actually provide a safe outlet for you to smash things up. Um, and it's a better, it's 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 a it's a good cathartic relief for for people. Like. Destruction equipment is lined up for a customer to choose from baseball bats, wrenches, iron pipes, and hammers to shovels. Beer bottles, glasses, plates, and bowls complete the standard stress relief package. In case the customer is traumatized by specific items. The shop provides options such as computers, keyboards, televisions, ovens, and more. And uh, what is the most sought after electronics item? Okay, it's a competition between VCRs and printers. Printer? Yeah, you know, cause okay, a lot of office jobs, right? And they're like, every time I have to print stuff, they're like, oh my god, I see this print. And always like, oh, this is the exact same model I have in my office. I'm gonna smash this. VCRs is more like. Um, like you know when you were a kid and then I like, used to put VCR, so like yeah, this thing is very novelty, I wanna smash it. Today is this young couple's anniversary. Destroying things may seem far from romantic as a way to celebrate, but it can be a good decision to keep their relationship alive when stress is engulfing both of them. Uh, it's our anniversary. Yeah. And it's been a stressful year. So, so we can't want to relieve stress by coming here and smash some stuff. Yeah. So, but that was a joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about in terms of stress level from scale 1 to 10? I would say I'm at 7 right now because school is quite stressful for me. So yeah, I, I don't think I'm coping very well. So I would like to relieve some stress by smashing some stuff. <laughs> Before stepping into the small, rectangular, concrete walled room, which has glass and other items scattered around, everyone must wear protective equipment, such as a thick bodysuit, a helmet, gloves and shoes. Then they select a weapon, and the stress relief begins. After 30 minutes, the beer bottles, glasses and plates are smashed to smithereens, as is the stress. It was like fun, la. it felt very like stress relieving to see like the thing get destroyed. Because yeah, there are a lot of times in, in school or at home where I want to destroy stuff but I couldn't, so that I can really relieve my stress here. Almost every customer comes to use the service for the same reason. Everyone says they feel better after smashing stuff, even if it's just for a short time. You said your stress level was somewhat around eight? Seven. His Seven. Was eight. Okay. And now, <laughs> what would you say? Maybe about five. Okay. <laughs> about there, I would say. Okay. Yeah. It's just a temporary relief. <laughs> Reality comes back to us. <laughs> oh. One to ten. Okay, uh, ten, okay. maybe a twelve. <laughs> yeah. oh. It's been a long week, yeah. For me, I would go with like one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so reach you. now after, from one, did it down to zero? I would go in like it's down to negative 100. Wow, okay. And for you, from 12? For me, at least to uh, like a five. Oh wow, yeah. so it okay. really helps? Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah, because it's really just like, um, allows us like a place for us to like just let loose. Mm -hmm. Things that like pent up energy and all that, we just throw it out here. Stress at school simply prepares Singaporeans to be stressed out at work later on in life. Educators want Singapore's education system to be efficient enough to make additional tutoring unnecessary. It's all about balance. If the child has a large portion of their, their time having a good balance of sleep, good balance of diet and play is very important for them to have time to play and socialize. Then if this clip that you show me is um, a small percentage where they, they have intensive learning and most important if they have fun in the learning, 
then it will be useful. School gives a bit of stress, but I think if you can manage your time properly, and if you can like spend quality time with your family and friends, and go out and exercise, make your life more meaningful, I think that uh, the stress can be managed. Ambition, vision and hard work have been internal factors driving Singapore's success from its inception until today. This enduring concept has led to the establishment of a sophisticated educational system, a robust economy and a peaceful, safe society. The undesirable consequence of this progress, however, is stress. While success and stress are not inherently intertwined, it appears that Singaporeans cannot entirely avoid it.